I got interested in working with Wright um, on the subject of Scientology because uh, I did a little bit of um, reading of books that he wrote before, one of which was Looming Towers. Now, I know there's controversy about the accuracy of it and everything else, but I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about that. All I know is that the way he wrote the book uh, appealed to me in terms of, of sharing what I knew about Scientology because he took two viewpoints on two different sides and he fully explicated both of them. He took Osama bin Laden, he took O'Neill, the, the justice person who was on to terrorists, and, and explained their viewpoints from the crib to the catastrophe. Um, and, and that is something I never saw done with Scientology before. And I assume, since he won the Pulitzer Prize for it, that you know he would remain true to that sort of fairness, um, that objectivity, where you're where you're where you're getting into two subjective views that conflict to see a bigger picture. Um, uh, the the end result of it, you know, clearly. Um, wasn't that at all. And in fact, it was one viewpoint, it was one anti-Scientology narrative that excluded anything that might muddy that narrative or might throw any bit of it into doubt. That was the end product, the book Going Clear. I identified going through it, um, and for me it was very frustrating because a lot of that other viewpoint I provided, uh, some of which I've, I've provided um, taped evidence of, but that's only a small minutiae fraction of, of the amount of uh, e explanations and facts and, and, um, ex and education on the subject that I provided to write that never made it into the book because it didn't fit the anti-Scientology narrative. Um, and, and as I reread the book, um, I, I, I did a review on it when it happened contemporaneously, and I just really sort of lashed out at some at some um, real obvious um, fact check errors that, that really peeved me at the time because I had been hounded on them numerous times by his fact checkers and him. And he, like several times on, on, on individual facts that he still got wrong in the book. And it, it really kind of um, threw me for a loop because I understood he was with a big publisher. It was probably got a huge advance. He was able to, to you know, take two years, have a whole crew of fact checkers and researchers and everything else, and, um, and have that many you know, glaring errors that just stuck out at me that were, that were just ones that, that, that involved me and things that I said. Um, I was just bookmarking that. And now I've done a further, deeper review since now the movie's come out and it's had such impact. Um, that I, I did a, a further review of the book and analyzed it and, and against my experience with Wright. And identified several kind of techniques that were used to, um, that he used to give the anti-scientology narrative as fact um, while excluding anything, um, any differing viewpoint. Um, the first, the first uh, technique he uses was to paint himself as, um, and he does it in the introduction of the book, and he did it in the introduction of the movie, and he did it on the, on the press circuit, was this uh, introduction of his pr approach, um, which he states right in the book was to find out why Scientology was so alluring and how, how it was so appealing and how it, it kept people within it are people stuck with it despite it being public relations uh, suicide? I think he put he put it that there must be something to it. Um, you know, ultimately, when the movie was done and he was writing the press circuit, he said really otherwise. He wasn't trying to find anything out. He was trying to advocate for tax exemption revo revocation, and he was trying to embarrass people from being involved in Scientology, just uh, trying to actively get them to defect. Um, you know, one of the things that, that, that made me want to participate too was that I looked for a previous book that he did on the subject of religion, and that was called Saints and Sinners. Um, 
and I was impressed by it at the outset because there was a there was quite a bit of a bias disclosure, um, right right from the beginning of the book. And in fact, he says in the introduction, thus the tendency of journalists to look upon religion as a marketplace of the weird and the absurd. I confess it is not easy to clear my head of this prejudice. And he states that right at the outset. And he's looking into people who, you know, everything from a Baptist minister to Jimmy Swaggart to uh, the head of the atheist movement to the head of the Church of Satan. Um, but he's stating right from the beginning, and he goes into a big personal subjective essay about how, you know, he even felt his father, you know, was a, was a traitor to him um, because he expressed doubt about his belief when he was on his deathbed. And, you know, it's very, you know, it's very kind of um, moving. Um, and, uh, and so he's always sort of trying to keep that balance when he's dealing with these people. In fact, at the end of the book, he's, he's giving all sorts of praise to the, the, uh, the head of atheism and the head of sa- the Satanists, um, saying that he really admires them because they continue to persist with their view despite, you know, all the brickbats that get thrown at them. So, you know, it was that kind of, that kind of objectivity and tolerance that I thought was going to spill over into his later project. And, of course, as we'll go through, you'll see that it did not. That's the first element. Uh, no bias disclosure in, in, this, in, in the, Scient- in the uh, Scientology book whatsoever. And, in fact, just the opposite. Um, him acting as if he's actually biased in the other direction. Clearly, there must be something good about this. I want to find out what it is. 